Just a little friendly reminder that Concord shuts down September 6th. So you're going to have to get your time in. And I'm talking to you, 48 people still playing the game on Steam. (laughs) How long must it take to get a match? Do you think that's the developers just sitting there with the game on? Or do you think there's really 48 people still playing this game, waiting minutes between matches? I'll let, I'll let you be the judge. But the salt over this game shutting down flows. And we're, of course, going to talk about it because it's hilarious. So the game didn't do well. People, a part of the game, are coming out and starting to talk about it. Like the lead character designer, who honestly should probably never get a job designing characters again. <laughs> because, boy, did you really... Screw this up. Not just the designs. Some of the designs are actually, you know, they're still kind of discount Overwatch, but they're okay. Uh, The colors are god-awful, even if the designs are all right. Like, everything about these characters are unappealing. Uh, They literally are kind of dollar store Overwatch characters. One of the funniest things I've seen out of this is the, you know, the hanging out by the grave meme. Well, one of them was a Concord character laying down with an Overwatch character and her big ass sitting on them. And, you know, it's not big ass as in a, as in a bad way. It's big ass as in a, in a nice thing. You know what I'm saying. I can't show it because YouTube is YouTube, but it was quite funny. So this guy came out and is amazed that the game shipped at all. Uh, To all the players who showed up for Concord, thank you. The positivity and constructive feedback in the face of overwhelming noise was huge for everyone at Firewalk. Building a positive community is why we did this. We saw you. Every stream, post, thread, emoji. We saw it all. Whether, to be fair, there wasn't really a lot of people to watch. So I'm sure that you did watch all of them. Firewalk is packed with tenacious fighters, multiple acquisitions, Engine upgrade from four to five. Uh, Global pandemic. Project delays. The fact we shipped it all is legendary. None of us knew what's next. None of us know what's next, but I do know this team is capable of wild energy when faced with a challenge. Honestly, this team should be broken up for shipping the biggest disaster in video game history. The fact that this game and the characters in this game got approved by multiple people is kind of a big red flag. But uh, one of those acquisitions I'd like to point out was Sony themselves who bought this studio. What an investment that's turned out to be. You know, I looked at this guy's history, and he actually worked for Bungie at one time and designed uh, Destiny's Exotics and some of the ships and stuff. So the guy's actually capable of doing really good work. What the hell happened with this game? (laughs) What the hell happened, John? Was this mandated for you to draw them and color them like you did? I would like to know what what was going on with the designing of these characters and what you were asked to provide for them. Uh, there's more. We've got somebody from Alan Wake 2 coming out and talking about Concord, and she's very upset. Uh, just a friendly reminder before we get into that, that Alan Wake 2 is still struggling to make back its money. And this was published on April 30th of 2024. That game sold a million copies, but still didn't make any money. Probably because, well, Alan Wake had a nice little sales, uh, sales record itself. I don't remember what it exactly was, but people liked that game. And I think out of the gate, it sold well because people were going to thought they were going to get a game starring Alan Wake and a game called Alan Wake 2, and that didn't happen. And then it got crushed because everyone walked away when they found out what it was. Maybe you enjoyed Alan Wake 2. Some people did. Uh, I skipped it because, well, it doesn't have Alan Wake in it. <laughs> so I decided not to play it. Uh, but she's very upset. Alan Wake 2 failed to turn a profit. 
or after Alan Wake 2 failed to turn a profit, Games Senior Community Manager calls for bigots to removed to be removed from gaming communities. That's right. We're still going to push those 2016 tactics and imagine that they work still. <laughs> but they don't. It's funny how when something that they prop up and literally is the ideal of what they want, uh, it fails and they just come out and attack people that made fun of it. Nobody was uh, coming at this with some kind of istophobic angle. People were just making fun of it because it looks like a cheap garbage version of Overwatch in a landscape overfilled with free-to-play shooters. Why would anybody stop playing the ones that they're already playing to go play a shitty version of a game there's already a whole bunch of? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. There's nothing that makes this game appeal to the types of games that already exist. I mean, like, so why would someone quit playing Overwatch for this game? Or Apex? Or any of these other looter shooter type of games that are already free to come play this shit? It just was never going to happen. And they should have made some better judgments. Maybe appealed to the male gaze. That might have helped, actually, in this case. But instead, they said, we're going to make sure that we're at least appealing as possible, and it's even more funny when you realize, like, 80% of console games are, like, men or something. So, you know, excellent decision-making. Uh, so this all starts with Nico Partners Director of Research, Daniel Ahmad, who says the comments around Concord from who right-wing gamers shows the power of collective self-deception. You say delusional stuff about DEI enough times and build a conspiracy around a narrative. They start seeing the false narrative everywhere. I guess we have to live with this now. And of course, an underlying emotional response is just standard bigotry and nothing new. Except now there are grifters putting on a four-stage act play about how capital owners have gone woke and therefore no longer care about the profit motive for some reason. Yeah, if I when I look at this game... When I look at Concord, it does scream, uh, we're ignoring profit. Who in their right mind thought that this was going to take off and be a giant hit? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody did. Nobody did. The designs are awful. You have a character that's so overweight, they have to pull their pants over their belly. Nobody wants to play as that character. So then this guy comes and says, prune all your gardens, push out bad actors, prepare your teams for the current conversation zeitgeist, give the community and social teams autonomy and resources to battle against toxicity, relay how all of this can impact the bottom line early to investors. And then the game science community manager comes in and says, what he said, but also uplift the good eggs, protect and support those who need it. But there has never been this full of accounts who are peddling hate 24-7. But it's still where a lot of good parts of the games community happen. Prune your gardens and let flowers grow. I think the garden's already been pruned. You kind of proved that. Uh, with Concord here, <laughs> when uh, you launched a game to the modern audience and they didn't show up. Uh, everybody else has got like a giant field of food they're growing. And a lot of these woke people have like that. Have you ever seen the Antifa meme where they were trying to grow a garden? It was like dirt and weeds. They couldn't figure it out. Uh, that's their garden. That's their garden. Still trying to grow it. Can't figure out why that Gatorade isn't working. I thought electrolytes could make the plants grow. Well, it turns out they don't. <laughs> Getting bigots out of your communities is a Band-Aid and not a permanent solution modeling desired behaviors and championing the kinds of community members you want to be the majority in your community takes effort and time. Start early, practice often. Small steps are steps too. Well, I'll tell you what steps are being made. One, Black Myth Wukong sitting over there with a million players playing it, 18 million copies sold. And then, you know, we have these Concords and Alan Wake 2s and Dustborns making no money. So, What's going to happen 
is the market is going to do what it's doing right now. It's going to look elsewhere for games, and it's getting them. Uh, Stellar Blades and stuff like that coming out of Korea. I guess China, too, is going to find it because these people are finding holes in the market and giving people what they want, basically. And all these Western studios, they're going to see this happen time and time again. They're going to see their games fail. As long as somebody else is offering what people actually want, they'll go there. That's the free market, and that's exactly what's happening. That's why you're seeing games like this just utterly crash into a wall. And it won't be the last one. I promise you it won't. So, anyway, let me know what you guys think about all of this. I'd like to hear from you. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.